Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have Lane Norton again. I've done a video on Lane before, it was whenever he was critiquing Jordan Peterson. Critiquing Jordan Peterson on the food pyramid. Pretty impressive. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to critique Lane again. This was a request from somebody. I need to start writing down the name so I can feature you guys on the channel. But, I'm looking forward to it. Not really, actually. Because Lane is insufferable. He is an obsequious, meek, execrable moron. I've said that before. He is a petulant, queer child. Just gratuitously ferocious. So, why don't we just jump directly into this. But first, please subscribe to the Patreon. I have a $2 month tier, a $5 month tier, and an $8 month tier to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, ad-free content, uncensored content, and unblurred pop-up references on screen. I don't think people are going to be missing out on even $5 a month. But very soon, very soon, I'm actually going to be making more content for the $8 month tier to actually entice people to want to subscribe there because I need some exclusive content. Also, buy my book, Contraindicated, A Closer Look and Revision of Mainstream Health Act axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. When that book is out, that book is released in hardcover, paperback, and ebook formats on April 1st. If this is a Sunday release and you're watching on YouTube, then that book is already out, so please refer to the description below and buy that book. With those two things being said, let's jump directly into this video. Hey guys, it's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for What the Fitness. Okay. Really? Seriously? Well, if that doesn't exemplify who Lane Norton is as a person, there you go. Salacious. It's not even funny. It's just juvenile. And this week, the carnivores re-enter the arena. Okay, great. Let's see how you can prove us wrong, Lane. You meathead. You're only sophisticated to the meatheads that are entirely unsophisticated. You're still unsophisticated. I got uh, sent a post from health coach Kate and Basically, the title. Let's read this. Before he even reads it and tries to misrepresent it, does a calorie, 100 calories of carbs, equal a calorie, 100 calories of protein? That's not 100 calories of protein. 10% of calories burned through digestion. You don't burn calories. Also, the calories contained in each one of these foods are the calories that would be yielded if you rapidly combusted that food via a massive electrical current in a bomb calorimeter, a closed thermodynamic system. Human bodies don't do that with food because we're open thermodynamic systems. So let's see what this is 10% of calories burned through digestion, so 90 calories net total, 30% of calories burned through digestion, 70 calories net total. This is false. This is pseudo-sophisticated nonsense. It's chicanery. This entire post is fallacious. I'd prefer all the carnivores within the space to be posting voracious content. Not voracious, voracious. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. This is just as bad as some of the other content I see, if not worse. Calories do equal calories. A calorie does equal a calorie because calories are units of heat measurement, informally speaking. I say informally because you can't actually measure energy. The pure, authentic form of energy cannot be directly measured. And so therefore they're photons, they have a rest mass of zero. All calories are the same. They are the exact same thing. But you don't yield calories from food because that's not what your body does with food. Anyway, he has a reason to critique this. Let's see if he gets his critiques right though. I suspect not. Does a calorie equal a calorie? And it's talking about how 100 calories from carbs is different than 100 calories from protein. But she shows a picture of a piece of bread and a piece of ribeye steak. She claims that 10% uh, of calories are burned through digestion. You don't burn a calorie. Once again, how do you burn a photon? And even if you're taking that term to be an informal term for oxidize, which is what your body actually does with a substrate, you can't oxidize a photon either. They have a rest mass of zero. You can oxidize chemical compounds and chemical constituents that have mass. Um, that's not necessarily correct. It's not correct at all, Lane. I just explained how that's not correct at all because you don't burn calories. That's false. You can't do that because TEF involves more than digestion. What's whatever, I, I get a point. 30% of calories are burned through digestion with the steak, which means that 100 calories of each, you get 90 calories net total versus- No, you don't yield calories from food, okay? You don't yield calories from food. I'm tired of this notion that you can eat calories or that you derive calories from food. You don't. Calories net total. Now she's showing this as a piece of bread and a steak. Let me explain to you why this is very misleading. Well, I already did. And Lane, you're going to mislead people even more. I suspect. I prophesy. First of all, there's very few slices of bread that I know of that are 100 calories. Most of them are... 
There are no calories at all. They aren't calories. There's no calories in that food, Lane. That's not how it works. It is a massive, very broad estimate as to how many calories would be yielded from that food if you rapidly combusted it, okay? It's allowed to be out legally by 20% in either direction, calorie numbers on food labels, because of the fact that it is a horrible estimate. There is such a vast error around that measurement. Again, not measurement, estimation. It's just unrealistic. It's chimeric thinking that you can actually determine how many calories can be derived from a food after you eat it, especially considering, once again, your body doesn't f***ing do that with food. Much less. In fact, your average slice of bread is around 4 grams of protein, 15 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, 70% of the protein in wheat, which is a primary constituent of bread, is gluten. You're not absorbing that protein, are you? It's working against you. Gluten is a lectin. They're plant proteins that bind to polysaccharides within the body, complex sugars, and differentiate into domestic cells of the body, launching an immune response. That immune response involving the body's destruction of not only that lectin, but also the protein it differentiated into due to its confusion. You can addle the body. Lectins do such a thing. You don't absorb lectins and utilize that for structural development. I cannot stand this notion of protein in plants. Hardly bioactive or bioavailable at all, and many of those proteins are actively damaging to the human physiological system. 15 grams of carbohydrate, one gram of fat, which is about 85. 15 grams of carbohydrates. Toxic. It's about 85 calories. No, it's not. It's about 85 calories, give or take 20% in either direction if you combusted it in the bomb calorimeter. Already covered that. A hefty bread slice to be 100 calories. They do exist, but they're, they weigh more overall. We're okay. <laughs> Trivial. Negligible. Ribeye steak, which is what this appears to be, um, do you know how small a piece of ribeye that has 100 calories is? It's very, very small. True. That's actually another fault than what that woman just posted. It was misleading because the entire ribeye steak was placed on the screen. As if it represented 100 calories. Serving of a ribeye this this size this actually looks like about 12 ounces but let's just take your your standard serving size which is about a 100 grams or 85 grams cooked something like that uh you'd have 21 grams of protein and 18 grams of fat for a total of 246 calories if you rapidly combusted it true One grams of protein and 18 grams of fat for a total of 246 calories if she really wanted to make this claim why did she use a ribeye steak tell me why why not a chicken breast? Was that funny? Was that a funny edit? Why not a chicken breast? Boneless, skinless, chicken breast tenderloin. Which is Why does it matter? No matter what she had put on the screen, it would have been wrong. Her implications would have been wrong. Virtually devoid of fat and almost all protein in terms of the macronutrient content. Well, I can only guess, but my guess is because carnivore advocates like this want you to believe that you can eat as much steak as you want and... Let's let him finish his sentence here. And uh, it's not going to cause you to accumulate body fat, which... That's not what we want you to believe, actually. I don't know who's saying that. There may be some people within the space that are saying that. It's not true. What we say is that if you eat until satiety with meat and animal fat and you try to gain some adiposity while eating things that are bereft and destitute of carbohydrates that are exogenously introduced and externally introduced into the body, it is much, much, much more difficult to overeat. It's because we have very strong satiety signals that prevent us from overeating on said food, therefore disallowing our bodies to have a higher propensity, typically, of storing onto excess adiposity or fat, or accumulating or accruing excess adiposity or fat. That's what the sensible people within the space say. What we also say is that the impact on your hormones from said macronutrients, those being protein and fat, is also not conducive to raising the propensity of the body to storing and accumulating excess fat, because it doesn't markedly stimulate or effectuate an insulin response, a spike really, exorbitantly high, like carbohydrates do, or like the combination of carbohydrates and fat together tend to do, or the combination of protein and carbohydrates together tend to do. Randall cycle and also protein's insulinogenic effects and how they are conditional depending on the carbohydrate load. Dr. Ben Bickman talked about this in one of his lectures at Low Carb Down Under. Pretty interesting and also important and relevant here. Okay, that's what we say. That's what the sensible people say. Whatever this woman posted here, and it's not to disparage or denigrate her as a person, but the ideas, because I stand by the truth, is just completely erroneous and misleading. But now you're getting this all wrong, as if she even had a point to begin with. If you stay under your uh, calorie maintenance... You no, because you don't...
Can't eat calories, Lane. You always talk about calories within your videos as if you know anything about calories. I'm sorry. I don't care what letters you have after your name. PhD. PhD. Please help Dr. Lane Norton become sensible. There you go. I think he's incorrigible, honestly. But I've said this a myriad of times in my videos. Calories are the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water around a closed thermodynamic system, also known as a bomb calorimeter, by one degree Celsius. It's a measurement of kinetic activity, or the movement of the molecules within that water. That movement, being caused by photons of a certain wavelength interacting with the surrounding water after being released from the rapid combustion of a food within said bomb calorimeter via a massive electrical current, thus causing rotations, vibrations, and translations. Therefore, to be informal, we say that they're units of heat energy. But once again, as I established in the beginning of this, that's contentious because you actually can't directly measure energy. So what we say is really that they're units of temperature, but even that gets contentious because there's only three units of temperature, that being Celsius, Fahrenheit, height and Kelvin, so whatever. Informally speaking, units of heat energy. The thing about energy is that the human body doesn't consume energy. It consumes mass or matter. It absorbs mass or matter. What happens is the body absorbs mass or matter in the forms of proteins, fat, carbohydrates, and alcohol, chemically interacts those substances under control of molecular oxygen. They react in such a way so as to change the chemical bonds, and since those chemical reactions are exothermic, meaning they release heat, as opposed to endothermic, meaning they require heat to effectuate, in other words, if you look in chemistry about chemistry, it's endorgonic, but that's a little different. Some photons or calories are released to entropy of the body. That's why we have body heat. We are releasing calories as we speak, yes. But a large portion of that heat energy via either substrate phosphorylation or oxidative phosphorylation is encapsulated in order to actually synthesize ATP from ADP plus PI, inorganic phosphate. ATP being the chemical energy storage form or the cellular energy currency of the cells because if you didn't know, ATP is a storage form of energy. It is an energy in and of itself. And then when that energy is actually needed for metabolic process, Processes, it is actually released from ATP from the breaking apart of ATP into ADP plus PI, the re-breaking apart, the catabolism of it, and then that effectuates the bodily processes. That is not the same as your body breaking that food down into calories. That is not the same thing. They are all mass constituents. Amino acids, fatty acids, carbohydrates, triglycerides, the intermediates with regards to any metabolic pathway, whether it be the Krebs cycle or anything else. Those are mass constituents. They have carbon bonds. They have a molar mass, okay? We need to get this straight. Quote, saying that you're going to have a net total of 70 calories from something you're not going to from something like steak versus a piece of bread by the way steak isn't all protein uh and bread isn't all carbs well you know what let's actually just do the math so again let's do the math lane piece of bread you have 85 total calories no, you don't. So, okay, your math is already skewed and flawed and fallacious. Once again, chimeric thinking here. You wish that it could be this simple, but it's not. I mean, it is simple body composition, the optimization of it, but not through these means. A piece of steak, a piece of ribeye steak, a serving, you have 246 total calories. Her claim is because protein has a higher TEF, which is thermic effect of food. Yes, the thermic effect of food does alter as well the amount of calories that you would be yielding from the food. But once again, you don't yield calories from the food. <sighs> Also, you're saying that you yield calories from protein. I mean, how many calories are you yielding from protein? You have no idea how many calories you're yielding from protein if we were to yield calories via metabolic means, because you have no idea how much of that protein was utilized in the synthesis of bodily structures versus how much of it was being oxidized. Amazing. You're gonna get less calories out of the steak. You're not going to get any calories. Unless net calories. She's right that protein has a higher TEF than carbohydrate. Protein's TEF is anywhere around 20 to 30 percent, carbohydrate around 5 to 10 percent, and pseudo sophistication. All of this because it's not relevant because you don't yield calories from food and your body doesn't use calories through metabolic processes. I mean, you always talk about burning calories off of fat or something like that as well. The amount of calories and the amount of energy really contained within your stored mass of fat on your body, mass of fat, is equal to the mass of that fat times the speed of light squared. Do you know how much energy that would be? Do you know how many photons that would be? You would be effulgent. You'd be coruscating with energy. You'd combust probably. It's ridiculous. It's zero to three so let's go through and just do a head-to-head -head comparison. If we take the most generous TEF estimates, which is 30% for protein, 10% for carbohydrate, and 3% for fat, if we look at the, look bread, at the bread, bread has bread about, about four grams, grams of protein, of protein, protein per slice, per slice, slice uh, uh, which is which four is calories, calories per gram, per gram. that's six. Oh, I forgot. I have to watch Lane Norton's nonsense. I forgot. <laughs> Pay attention, Eddie. Assiduity is what we need to employ here, except for the fact that I've already covered everything with assiduity, so calories from protein. If 30% of that is lost through TEF, 
that's about 4.8 calories from TEF. The carbohydrate content is 15 grams. There's one gram of fat in bread. Uh, this is garrulous, bloviating, loquacious nonsense. It's just bread and circuses. That's nine calories per gram. That's nine calories from fat. Uh, times 3% TEF is only 0.27 calories from uh, lost to TEF from the fat content of bread. So if we add all those up, the TEFs, uh, 4.8 from protein, six from carbohydrate, and 0.3 from fat, we get 73.9 net calories. Yep, and all this math was done in vain because you can't yield calories from food, end of discussion, we're done. You wrote all that out for nothing. The bread, so that's subtracting out those TEF values. So it said total calories were 85. Once you subtract the TEF values, it's about 74. Now, let's take the ribeye. Now again, people will defend. Really? and say, well, no, she was talking about just protein. Well, then why didn't she use a chicken breast? A remarkable too is a paper. And if she wanted something purely just carbohydrate, why not just use like gummy bears or something like that? If you Are you kidding me, Lane? I mean, if she were to do the comparison, if this had any utility whatsoever, wouldn't you just use straight carbohydrate in the form of glucose powder or something to eliminate any other confounding variables? within the foods. That doesn't eliminate confounding variables within the physiological system that they're introduced into. That's just ridiculous. I'm just trying to entertain the idea a little bit here, but goodness me. I'm gonna make that comparison, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and go through it. So a ribeye on average has about 21 grams of protein per serving and 18 grams of fat. That is a total calorie amount of 246 calories. Okay, 21 grams of protein times four. We get uh, 30.1 as the total TEF lost in that serving of steak. So that's 73.9 net calories from a slice of bread versus 215.9 net calories from a serving of ribeye steak. Now I know- False. Still false. Those numbers should be zero and zero. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and disease one may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product in doing such a thing, is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule called Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationship from this product and any hard health outcomes. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many other products from the Cerule company, please refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Now, I know what the carnivores are going to come in here and say in the low carb advocates. They're going to say, that's, that's not a fair comparison because it was saying, you know, 100 calories. That's actually not what we're going to say. That's not what I said just now, because I know what I'm talking about. This irreverent, insolent, impudent attitude you have towards carnivores is also completely unfounded, because they know more than you do, typically. They have a better understanding of basic rudimentary fundamental levels of science in every sphere. Even biochemistry lane, you have a master's in biochemistry, I believe, doesn't show. And even if you understood biochemistry, you don't understand physics. And that's clear right here when you talk about calories, anytime you talk about it. You know, straight up between these two. Okay. So let's look at what the actual percentage of the total calories are lost to TEF from a slice of bread compared to a ribeye steak. If okay, the answer to this is really simple. Do not look at calorie numbers ever on any food whatsoever because you don't yield calories from food. Eat the species appropriate, species specific diet for your physiology and for your species, that being 100% carnivore consisting primarily of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals with added fat in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, primarily saturated fat, straight hydrocarbon chains, biochemically speaking, salt to taste, and water. As established unequivocally and unambiguously at this point by stable nitrogen and carbon isotopes isotope analyses conducted in 2019 on the collagen of the long bones of ancient human remains that established once again unequivocally via chemical anthropological means in a mass spectrometer that human beings derived 80% of their effective fuel intake from the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals and the other 20% from large fibrous tubers inferentially speaking only consumed during times of unsuccessful hunts or starvation episodes. We know via other sciences that compare to anatomy that fiber itself, fibrous tubers, are contraindicated, which is why I'm not saying to have your diet entirely congruous with that diet, 80% animal.
only and the other 20% being fibrous tubers. Don't do that. But we know what we ate for millions of years, four and a half million years, if you include protohumans that preceded our current speciation. Transition to that diet sensibly and prudently over the course of six to eight weeks, dropping your consumption of plant compounds and carbohydrates and raising your consumption of animal products commensurate with that. Dairy is fine if it works well for you, but honestly, it's technically still a very slight contraindication, especially if you get some with lactose in it, some sugar in it. Eggs are also entirely fine. I eat eggs every day. Take bread, which loses 11 point, a slice of bread based on our calculations, loses 11.1 .1 calories to TEF. We divide that by the total calorie amount 85. This is astonishing, everyone. Look at how much math he has done on this page in vain for no f***ing reason. I saved you so much time in the very beginning of this by explaining that you don't eat calories and your body doesn't absorb calories and doesn't utilize calories for metabolic processes. Also, before anyone comes into the comments and says that mass and energy are interconvertible, they're the same thing effectively, just in different manifestations or different forms, mass and energy are interconvertible. But on a day-to-day -day basis, in our bodies especially, they don't actually do this. They don't convert. So we say that mass and energy are different. For example, this table in front of me is made up of mass or matter, something real and tangible. The energy contained within this table is equal to the mass of this table times the speed of light squared. But it's not like at any given point right now, this table will poof and combust into energy. It's not how it works. It's also not how it works in the body. Energy is utilized within the body after it being released from exothermic biochemical reactions. Okay, a lot of it being released to entropy, so. We get 13.1% of calories from a slice of bread are lost to TEF. If we do the ribeye. No, it's not, by the way. No, they're not, really. 3.1 calories lost to TEF divided by 46 total calories is 12.2% lost to TEF. Almost 1% greater TEF from a slice of of bread compared to a ribeye steak. If false again, I already covered it though. So all I get to say now is just false because I've already explained everything. If you need more explanations or you want to hear it again, please rewind the video. Do something like a sirloin or uh, a tenderloin or uh, a chicken breast like I said. Well, it doesn't matter because you're not yielding calories from the food. Those are going to come out winning. Uh, they're going to come out bad. How about you talk about the effect on the endocrine system from those foods, the differences there, okay, Blaine? Why don't we go ahead and do that? Bread is primarily carbohydrates, and carbohydrates will spike your insulin, exogenous carbohydrates. Exogenous carbohydrates are a toxin. They are inherently toxic. Glucose itself is the prototypical one. It's an aldohexose. It's a six-carbon aldehyde. Aldehyde is a functional group in chemistry and chemical terms. Aldehydes almost invariably and inexorably are harmful to the body, okay? Exogenously introduced ones. We produce glucose endogenously via gluconeogenesis if you are not actually consuming carbohydrates, that'll be upregulated, that metabolic pathway, through amino acids, glycerol, some odd chain fatty acids, and lactate. Of course, that's during exercise, though. But anyway, carbohydrates will spike your insulin. Insulin is an anabolic hormone, meaning building up and storing things. So it does allow for muscle synthesis. It is important in muscle building, but it is also essential for fat storage. Okay? If two genetically identical twins, both phenotypically and genotypically identical, had the same mass of fat consumed, all other confounders in this a priori kind of hypothetical ideal world in a vacuum, really, where there's no other confounding variables. If one of them were to consume fat in the indicated forms, that being animal fat, really, and the other were to consume a bolus of carbohydrates, their hormonal responses would be different. And therefore, the way in which their body would decide to actually allocate those mass constituents, not calories, mass constituents, because that's what's broken down into in the stomach acid, would be different. It would differ. Okay, Blaine? So why don't you talk about that? Because the endocrine system is absolutely the underpinning factor, the most salient factor, and the most relevant factor when it comes to optimizing body composition. Okay because they have more protein, less fat. But the fact that she put a fatty ribeye in there just shows her trying to push her high fat, low carb agenda. And the science, and because I can do math, does- You did trivial bread and circuses math. You insolent you offensive Recently, it just came out, I just saw this morning, that someone, a cancer patient, had messaged Anthony Chafee about Lane Norton's behavior. This person told Lane to look into autophagy during fasting and how it helps with cancer, and he basically told him that he was a f idiot and got all of his fans to insult him. Encouraged it, actually. It's just barbaric, primitive, unsophisticated, petulant behavior from a querulous, meek child here. Also, in other videos, I've referred to him as obsequious, obedient, or attentive to an excessive or servile degree. That that is because of his seemingly obsequious nature towards big pharma and big government. I mean, defending the USDA food pyramid, saying that it's not at fault and the people that employed it and actually gave the go-ahead for its release and its promulgation and advertising.
advertisement. We're not at fault. It's because people didn't follow the food pyramid that that's why we see this decline in our integrity and robustness as a species. Interesting theory, Lane. Once again, seems quite obsequious. Does not stack up to her. No, Lane, the science doesn't stick up to your fallacious erroneous claim or claims that calories are utilized within the body the way in which you say they are. They f***ing aren't. You arrogant, haughty, complacent it's one thing to be abrasive and callous with your speech and be right. It's another thing to be this acerbic and callous and acrimonious and be absolutely fundamentally incorrect. It's amazing. It's embarrassing. You should feel chagrined and ashamed. No matter how she slices it. So, huh, did you see my pun there? Slices it? My puns aren't just bad. They are terrible. I graduated from University of Evansville with the um, mechanical engineering. If we do these percentages, if we compare straight up TEF calories, 100 calories from bread would lose 13.1. Oh my god, it's amazing the cognitive dissonance being exhibited here. Lane, holy sh To TEF, that would leave 86.9 calories as a net. 100 calories from ribeye steak, 12.2% TEF, that leaves 87.9. Point eight calories net. The bread still wins in this comparison. So, sorry health coach- uh, Still false, still false. Sorry to explain why you don't yield calories from food. Sorry health coach Kate. Um, next time, before you put up something like that, actually maybe do some math and- Okay, sorry Lane, you arrogant How about you learn some actual physics and science and metabolism, you snarky shit. Make sure that it actually supports the claim you're making or just, here's an idea, put a low-fat source of protein on there and promote that. I'm going to do this disclaimer because I know the carnivore crazies are going to come in here and say- Okay, massive generalization and it's an inappropriate one at that. Also, vapid epithet, ad hom, okay? I would say attack the argument at hand, but you just tried to do that here and you failed because you entertained the bread and circuses element of it, the fallacious erroneous nature of the substance of her post and this ideology here. Saying everyone should eat bread. I'm not saying that bread is a better choice of food than meat. Good, because it's not. Bread is contraindicated in the extreme. Primarily carbohydrate laden, also teeming with other plant toxins like fiber. If you get wheat bread, insoluble fiber, in my opinion, is the worst, just because of how I know that it functions within the body compared to other fibers like resistant starch and soluble fiber and stuff like that. Also lectins, already explained what those are. If it's made with any oats, there's some breads that are like that. Well, then you've got a healthy dose of phytates and oxalates or oxalic acid, really. Plant toxins, don't eat them. There's also hardly any nutrient value, okay? It was relegated to peasants in the past. Wonder why. Not saying that uh, meat doesn't have nutritional value. It depends on what you're trying to get, okay? I was funded, my research in graduate school was funded by the Egg Nutrition Center, the National Dairy Council, and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. All three of those are groups that are high protein, if you will, uh, bias, right? So if anything, I should have a bias towards this stuff, but- That's not exactly the case. You may have had a bias during the conduction of said studies. You're not conducting a study right now, so you can speak your mind and say what you want. It's not exactly the case, Lane. It's not how it works. Can't, because I can't stomach when somebody makes claims that are not supported by science. Right, okay, so now he's feigning moral superiority in a sanctimonious fashion by saying that he is just sticking by the truth and he's a purveyor of it and he will sacrifice his proclivities to abide by a faction's ideology if it interferes with the truth. He's saying it in a morally superior way. It's a virtue signaling attempt. It's a sanctimonious virtue signaling attempt. He's feigning it. It is not real. It is not true. It is in order to adorn yourself and aggrandize yourself in the perception of other people. In other words, it's made and said to make himself appear more moral and virtuous. But Lane, you are a liar. You don't do this, in fact. You use that guise in order to beguile and manipulate people. You absolute misanthropic f and once again petulant child. I think meat is a great source of essential amino acids and high quality protein. Great. That doesn't mean anything that what you said in here has any more credibility because of your feigning, what I emphasize and iterate, of fairness with respect to your approach to assessing the strength of the argument that was presented to you at the beginning of this video. Making the claim, if you're presenting a slice of bread and a ribeye steak and saying that, you know, don't worry about the calories because you're actually getting less from the ribeye. Well, you're not getting any. That's why you shouldn't worry about the calories. You're not getting any from any food.
100% false, not supported by data. Oh, well, we also just went over what's 100% false and what's not supported by data. Well, actually, not really data, physics. It's not supported by the universe in which we all find ourselves within and its respective laws and the laws of the human body. And biochemistry, the irony is not lost with this one, folks, as someone, Lane Norton, that has a degree in biochemistry. By the way, she goes off in the comments saying, this is why tracking calories, I think, is useless. So it's useless because you don't f get any from any food. I'm saying that to you, and I'm saying that to the woman who posted that. Let me get this straight. Because it's hard to track exactly how many calories you're getting from a food, we shouldn't bother tracking it at all. Th you don't get any, Lane. <laughs> how many times do I have to say this? Saying, because you can't track your investments exactly and your expenses exactly in a budget because they fluctuate because one day you might get a better return on your investment based on how the market's doing. Okay, we understand what the analogy means. Another day. This is superfluous. And also your expenses, you cannot completely predict. That's like saying a budget isn't helpful for saving money. Yeah, and that example, that would be inane. That would be silly. The difference is that your body doesn't f***ing use calories. Do you need to have a budget to save money? No, you do not. You can save money without a budget. Is it very helpful for certain people? Absolutely. Uh, now Lane Norton has turned into an economist. Sick and tired of these straw man arguments and people like Kate. You know what I'm sick and tired of Lane is your exhibition and presentation of insolence, impudence and impertinence and just absolute irreverence towards people that absolutely know what they're talking about as compared to you who knows nothing. And I'm also tired of this bread and circuses game when it comes to anyone who talks about calories. Learn physics. Learn physics. Learn metabolic pathways. Learn how the body works physiologically. And I tell you, Lane, to learn it because even though you have a master's degree in biochemistry, you clearly didn't learn anything there. Or at least you didn't learn how to apply it in practical, pragmatic ways in your life and in other people's lives, in the world in which we all find ourselves within. Because if you did learn that, you wouldn't be saying this inane nonsense. That bullshit as fact. Next time, Kate, do some f***ing math. Next time, Lane, do some f***ing studying. Do some f***ing learning. Absolutely disrespectful, offensive moron. Yeah, we're done. We're done with that. Well, I didn't really want that to go on as long as it did, but it did. 10 minute, 45 second video. I thought that it was going to get done a lot quicker because I was just able to play the entire thing and let him just waffle on with his nonsense, his mathematical bread and circuses. But fortunately, that's not the case. But anyway, at least we're done now. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel and also comment your thoughts below and also subscribe to the Patreon. Once again, if you haven't already, $2 a month tier, $5 a month tier and $8 a month tier for all the perks that I listed off in the beginning. And also, if you are looking to further ameliorate any inflammation, if you're looking for an extra punch or an extra kick to ameliorate inflammation that still may be extant or still in existence in your body, and you've already adopted a carnivorous diet bereft of plant material and carbohydrates, these things do happen. Accrual is a thing, and sometimes, you know, it's not an instant fix. I would refer to the link on the bottom of the screen now, the Cerule link, and I would recommend that you look into those products. And if you are looking to actually learn about those products, lucky for you, I have a very, very thorough elucidation video that will be in the upper right corner corner of the screen. If not, sometimes it doesn't show up on the screen on YouTube. It'll be in the description below. Please refer to that link to learn about who should take it, what they are, why you should take it, what they even do in the first place. And also I have an upcoming video, it may already be released, which is an interview between me and Bart K again about Cerule products. And it covers any other question that you may have regarding the business itself and also any of the products that they sell. And if you don't want to pay for those products, you can actually get your products for free if you sign up to be an independent business owner with Cerule which may be a turn off to some people, but once again, that's why I refer you to the other video, the interview, because we cover any worries that anyone might have with respect to that kind of marketing. So also, as I alluded to in the beginning, buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century when that book is out, which will be on April 1st. The audiobook will come later. I'm in the middle of recording that or re-recording it. That is coming soon. Also follow me on Instagram and also follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm uploading my YouTube videos to that that platform just to hedge against any potential threat that I may face of any censorship, whether it be inconspicuous censorship like shadow banning or outright authoritative banning of my channel on the platform. Please migrate over there, follow me, even if you don't use it that often, and even if I don't really use it that often, because I may very well have to use that platform soon enough. Also email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any other questions, and with that being said, join me next time when we dispense with, rightfully so, and debunk Lane fucking Norton again, spouting nonsense about calories and showing his 
absolute incompetence and his irreverent insolence with respect to people that know far more about things that he knows nothing about. So, till then.